we'll start with a quick overview of binary cross entropy loss formula. Then, we'll compute BCE loss, the visual way. Finally, we'll go from the visuals back to the formula. This is the typical binary cross entropy loss formula you'll find in books and tutorials. It has two components, one for the negative class, and one for the positive class. We can split the summation in two parts, one for each class. Notice that each summation is using the points corresponding to its respective class only. First, let's focus on the negative, or red, class. Its label is zero. So this term is always going to be one. Moreover, for every red point, the right-hand side of equation, is going to be zero. Now, let's turn our attention to the positive, or green class. Its label is 1. For every green point, this term is always going to be 1. Also, this time, it is the left-hand side of the equation. That is going to be 0. If we add up both sides, for negative and positive classes, we'll get our full formula back. Next, let's talk about the 1 over n terms. Since they are constants, we can move them inside the summations. There are n points in our dataset. So, 1 over n is the probability of any given point being sampled. In other words, that's the actual distribution of our data, q of y. You can think of q of y as the weight given to each point in the dataset while computing the BCE loss. The loss itself is computed using the probabilities, p of y, produced by a model. That's the probability of a point being red. And that's the probability of a point being green. Perhaps you notice that both terms, for negative and positive classes, are quite similar to one another. So we can turn them both into a summation over both classes, red and green. Now that we're familiar with the formula of binary cross entropy loss, let's go over an example. Let's start our example with a simple dataset. It has a single feature, x, and 10 points. Ours is a binary classification task, so our points are split in two classes, three red points in the negative class, and seven green points in the positive class. Now, let's move the green points up, and the red points down. The green points are labeled as 1, while the red points are labeled as 0. Let's fit a logistic regression to these points. The bars below the curve represent the probability of a point being green, even if the points are actually red. For these points, we take the bars above the curve instead. So they represent the probability of a point being red. Now that we have the probabilities of a point being the color it actually is, let's focus on the bars only. Green bars, the probabilities of actual green points being green, go to the right. While red bars, the probabilities of actual red points being red, go to the left. Let's bring the axes back to the plots. But, remember, BCE loss uses log probabilities, so we need to transform these bars. Notice that the shortest bars, those representing the lowest probabilities of a point being the color it actually is, become the tallest bars after the transformation. This is expected, since these bars are the ones the logistic regression is less confident about. There we have it, each bar represents the error computed for a given data point. Now we can aggregate them into a loss. Let's move back to the binary cross entropies formula, step by step. These bars are the errors we computed for our data points. Let's sum up the red bars, the errors for the three red points in our dataset. And then, let's sum up the errors for the green bars, corresponding to the seven green points in our dataset. Adding both terms together gives us the BCE loss formula we've arrived at the end of part one. Now, let's work our way back to the typical expression of BCE loss. Remember, Q of Y is the probability of a point being sampled. It is the weight given to each computed error. That is, 1 over n. Since 1 over n is a constant, we can move it outside of the summations. Now, let's focus on the red points. We can replace this term, 1, for another term that is always going to be 1, but only if the point is red. Moving on to the right side of the equation, it is this term that is always going to be 1, but only if the point is green. Next, let's take both summations and turn them into a single one. Notice that this is only possible because, for each data point, only one term will have a non-zero value. For red points, the second term is always zero. For green points, 
It is the first one that is always zero. There we go. We arrived at the typical BCE loss formula introduced at the start. I hope this video helped you develop better intuition about how BCE loss works. Thank you for watching, and keep on learning.